First up, we have one of our sponsors for Music and Money Investors Group. One of my uh, mentors is now doing something that is just absolutely fascinating and incredible. And it is a financial tool that I think is going to blow all of your minds. So my friend, Tom Lonnie. Thank you, Seth. Thank you guys. I'm so glad to be able to come here and talk to you for a few minutes about something that I'm super, super passionate about, helping you think like a banker. So if you can put your mindset into the way a banker thinks, then you will end up having your money be more efficient. Let's just go with a quick example of how banks make money. And then I'm going to transition to how you could use those same principles that bankers use to dramatically increase your rates of return on real estate investing. You want to put your money in a position where it grows and grows and grows and you still have access to be able to use it. Most of the time, if you're putting your money into anything that grows over time, it's just only able to be used there and nowhere else. If you were to deposit $100,000 into a bank and they were to pay you 25 basis points or a quarter of a point interest for that $100,000, that would be how much that they would pay you for a year. That would be $250, right? So you deposit money into a bank and then they pay you for, for that. So if a bank is paying 25% or 25 basis points or a quarter of a point interest and they're then turning around and lending that money out for four and three quarters interest for somebody who needs the money, how much are they actually making? most of the room would say, hey, they're making a spread of four and a half percent. So they're paying out a quarter point and they're charging four and three quarters, so that's four and a half percent, which sounds pretty reasonable. I'm going to pull up a financial calculator real quick and let's look at whether or not that is actually true. I'll put this into a um, percentage rate and the way that you get around this thinking of thinking in terms of spreads financially is to put dollars to it. So if you deposit $100,000, that would be paying at 0.25% interest, that would be $250. Let's put in one year. And at the end of the year, the bank has charged four and three quarters percent interest for the use of that money and they're making $4,750 on that. So if that makes sense, let me just put it in here. So you can see the actual return on that money because it wasn't the banks to begin with was actually 1,800%. That kind of beats the heck out of 4.5% spread is what normally people think. But the reason this works this way is because it's all other people's money. What I'm trying to do is to help people get their head in the mind frame of how can I do this with my own personal finances. This is a company that came and did a talk here at Music and Money a couple of months ago, which I absolutely loved. What they do is it's a turnkey real estate company where you, they buy the house, they renovate it, all you do is put down a 20% down payment. So what they've got going here is a $72,700 property. It's a three bedroom, uh, one and a half bath, uh, rents for $795 a month. And um, if you put down 20% and you have a, 10, a 30 year loan and you pay a property management fee of 10%, city and county taxes and property insurance, Roughly, that's cash flowing at $279 a month. I mean, that's not guaranteed, but those numbers are pretty close, okay? So let's analyze this deal. That's pretty good on the face of it, right? But let's analyze this deal, and I'll run it through the grid of what I do. I put money into a specially designed life insurance product called a high early cash value life insurance product. And it only works 
with dividend paying whole life insurance companies. So I don't do anything with anything that has any risk involved with it. So my, my bulletproof wealth strategy is completely risk adverse. So if you're going to be doing the risk, it's going to be on the real estate, not on the place to store money. For example, if you do indexed universal life or, or universal life or variable universal life, all of those, the cost of insurance is not guaranteed. So I do not mess around with any of that. I only go with the super safe, um, guaranteed cost of insurance products. So let's take a look here at these numbers. If you buy the property for $72,700 and you have to put down 20%, that would be $14,540 that you'd have to come up with out of pocket. So when you have the money stored safely inside of a high early cash value life insurance product, it is compounding, the money's compounding in there, but you have access to it via a collateralized loan at 5%. If you were taking $14,500 and you were to pay back 5%, it would be $727, okay? So that's the interest on your down payment because you're not actually using your own money to put in the down payment. You're using the insurance company's money, okay? And your money is continuing to grow. $279, that's the cash flow estimate per month on that property. If you take that times 12, that is $3,348. So back to my example of thinking like a banker. If you can take and pay $727 for the use of somebody else's money and turn it into $3,348 by doing this strategy, your actual rate of return is what? What do you guys think? It's going to be way, <laughs> it's going to be way better than the 21% that they had estimated. It's actually 360 you know, percent that you're making on that deal and you're doing that kind of returns. The, the exponential increase happens when you use more of other people's money. Okay, And that, that's why I'm so excited about turning this light bulb on for people because it helps them to realize that if you have a place to get that down payment, it just makes life a lot easier and that way you're not having to give up cash to do it. This is some of the, the um, ways that I design these things and this is just a pure example. This is on a 45 year old male in good health and I can't give you any kind of specific numbers on you because it varies depending on your age and your health and all kinds of uh, different variables. But let's take a look here. This is what I call a microwave policy design. And what that means is that you're dumping in as much money as humanly possible into the contract immediately in order to be able to access it. So you can access the money after 30 days of starting a new one of these contracts. This is an initial premium on a 45-year-old male of $186,782. Well, that is made up of three different buckets, okay? It's made up of a base contract premium, a flexible protection rider, and a paid-up additions rider. This paid-up additions rider is what goes almost straight into cash value. This is what you can loan against. Now, in the first year, the company has a 10% capital reserve ratio. And then after that, after the first year, it switches to like 2%. So it goes from, you can loan 90% of that to about 98% of it. In this case, we're trying to figure out for a $4 million death benefit, what is the most amount of money you can dump in for a $4 million death benefit? If you take a look here, in this example, it's dumping in as much money as possible followed by the least money as possible in order to keep this death benefit in place. What I do is I try to figure out how to make your money work as efficiently as possible. And in order to do that, I have to try to figure out how to reduce the amount of money that is being considered loads or fees on the policy. So the way I do that is by putting as much in as humanly possible into a paid up additions rider. So you can see in this case, I'm putting in 
149, $145,000 into a paid up additions rider, and then it's instantly just moving over here into your cash value, and it's really, really exciting. The way that I get paid is based on a commission from the insurance company, and I do everything possible to lower that commission down as far as possible. There's no greater tax benefits that exist than inside of a life insurance policy. Because once money gets into your cash value, it can compound forever. It's tax deferred on the growth, and then if you design it properly, it's distributed tax-free for retirement. So this is a crockpot design, and it is similar to the microwave, but the difference is, is that you're putting in the same amount of premium each year, and it just takes longer to get that cash value up high enough to do any major real estate investing. So this is a same exact mail, same exact numbers, but he's just putting in a, a, an even amount every year, and it's a slow growth, and it's, it's you know great for somebody who just wants to build it up over time and then eventually be able to use it. I mean, you could even do a few of those smaller properties that I was just discussing at the beginning um, right away with this, with this policy design. This would be an example in the microwave of taking a loan. In this case, they're taking a loan and then the repayment terms on this are completely unstructured. So the way it works is you can see he took a $140,000 loan and that reduced his death benefit by the $140,000. So if something happens to you and you have an outstanding loan, the company just repays the loan and then your beneficiary gets just the, the amount of the death benefit that's generated minus the loan. So in this case, a $140,000 loan comes out. I restructured this one to pay back over 10 years so that you can see the loan balance going down. And at the end of it, it was like your money just kept growing and compounding and it just was, it was amazing. So you end up being able to use your money, invest it, and then have it grow as well. Uh, the crock pot design, the loan is gonna be a lot less because you have less at the beginning to access. In this design, I did $40,000 here um, as a loan versus the other one as 140, but you can still build up quite a bit of cash value uh, over time in the crock pot and then just access it as you need it, pay back the loan, and you're good to go. You can go back to that well over and over and over again without interrupting the compounding growth. This is just kind of an overview and if you want me to um, talk with you in person basically what I have to do is I have to analyze your personal financial situation and see what would work for you the best. Thank you so much.